guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. All right, let's start with this. Listen, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit, let me say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is much more than God's spiritual compass in your life. He's much more than a spiritual compass because we know that he's our guide. We know that he's our helper. I, I understand that. But let's understand the, the total function of the Holy Spirit, which tonight I want to talk to you about um, one of the names that, that he's uh, represented by, and it's, and it's counselor. Everybody say counselor. You know, I don't know about you, but um, you know what? I think that many of us are, are very quick to go and get counsel from a bunch of friends, which is great. The Bible says that, you know what, in the multitude of counselors, there's what? No, there's safety. What's wrong with you guys? Y'all know your Bible? Good Lord. There's wisdom. Praise God. All of you are wrong. Good Lord. Y'all read your Bible? In the multitude of counselors, there's what? So it's great to have counsel. You need counsel from people. I get that. But there is no greater counselor than the Holy Spirit. And he's free. You don't have to pay thousands of dollars for counseling, which I'm not here to, to, to put counseling down. I think counseling is wonderful. It's the direction Elevate Church is moving where we will have counseling available here. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll be starting a ministry called Think Recovery this year, which will start helping people how to... Uh, practically apply some principles, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you just, uh, I'm going to whet your appetite a little bit tonight just to kind of give you an idea what Think Recovery will be like. But we have the greatest counselor and he's the Holy Spirit and he lives in us. And the Holy Spirit wants to connect with us. And, and the Holy Spirit wants us to go beyond just living a surface Christian life. He wants us to have a little bit more depth in the things of God. But that means that we have to be wonderful students for the Holy Spirit to teach us some things. And so I'm praying that tonight, that by the time you leave here tonight, you're going to start addressing some things in your life, in your heart, that maybe you've been running from. We're not going to run anymore from the things, the pain, the wounds that we, that we deal with in life. It's time to face the truth. It's time to face the reality. Because if not, then there'll never be real change. There, on, there will only be you know, it's surface change, but there'll never be true change. And God wants to do something tonight starting this hour. How many are ready for change? No, but for real, don't, don't be all that Christianese lifting hand. Like, how many are ready for change? Amen. Okay, good, good. So I got the right crowd tonight, and, and, and I know we're going to enjoy ourselves. And so he, he's, he's our counselor, and he wants to teach us. Everybody say, the Holy Spirit wants to teach me. I'm having you say this because you got to understand this. The Holy Spirit wants to teach me. Think about it. The disciples, did they have a Bible when they were preaching the gospel? No. You know what they had? Holy Spirit, that's it. There was no Bible. And so they relied. They depended on this relationship with the Holy Spirit. In today's church, there is no relation between a believer and the Holy Spirit anymore. We solely rely on our Bible, which is the foundation and should govern your life. But the power to the word is the Holy Spirit because he brings it to life. If not, he wouldn't be called or named resurrection life. And so we need to have a better acquaintance or a better relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because he is the only one who can teach us how to address the wounds that you and I deal with. The broken hearts that we go through, he's the only one who can bring clear revelation and healing to our hearts. The only one. And so I pray that in 2017 that we would stop the noise and that we would really get in that place of some depth and really say, God, okay, I'm ready for you to do the spiritual surgery that I need. And I want you to go in, Holy Spirit, and I want you to go to those places that I have not addressed and that I've just kind of been trying to ignore, but no more ignoring. It's time to, time to deal with it. Let's have some, just tap your neighbor and say, come on, man, get it together, will you? Yeah. <laughs> the reason that Jesus said these famous words, he says, hey, listen, I no longer leave you an orphan. Everybody say orphan. 
Well, just think about the word orphan. Why would Jesus use the word orphan? Well, what does an orphan feel? Abandoned. Lonely. What else does an orphan feel? Come on, talk to me, church. Sad. Lonely. Fear. Rejected. Angry. Ooh. Do you know that anger is not an emotion? It's a second. It's, 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 there's something so much deeper before anger. Okay, what else do you feel? What does an orphan feel? Betrayal. That's a good one. Betrayal. Betrayal. Like how, how can someone give me up? What else? Isolated. Trapped. Insecure. Worthless. Lost. I'm sorry. Hate. Has anyone ever felt any of those words that we just shouted right now? Lift your hand if you've ever experienced any of those words, any of those feelings. Now look at look around you. No, look, I didn't say put the towel shower on you. Clean it up, man. Look around you now. I've experienced. Okay, so so check this out. So this message is for everyone. Don't leave here and be like, oh no, I'm good. No, you're not. <laughs> not. Don't don't be looking at your spouse like you better listen to his message because you need change, girl or dude. And so listen. And so Jesus said, I no longer leave you an orphan. I no longer want you to feel, let me say feel, feel, all those things anymore. So now I leave you another what? Helper. And so God, God understands. Listen, emotions are not your enemy. Emotions were created by God for you and I to experience the most amazing things in relation with him and with each other. God created these emotions that we experience for something healthy, not unhealthy. But we live in a broken world, and when we live in a broken world, people get wounded. People get wounded not only in family, people get wounded not only at work, but people get wounded in church. People get wounded in various seasons of life it comes with it and so the answer or the question and then the answer the question is how do I start addressing it and the answer is always going to be Holy Spirit are you with me today okay so uh, the reason I, I want to mention Jesus is because how many know that Jesus was not only your Savior but he was your Savior with emotions Huh? Let's look up on the screen. Look. We had a Savior with emotions. He shed tears. Do you guys remember when Jesus wept? He, is that an emotion? How about this next one? He was filled with joy. Is that an emotion? Heck to the yeah. Look. He grieved and he felt sorrow. He was angry. Hey, listen. There's nothing wrong with anger until you sin. Because everyone has a moment of anger. He showed astonishment and wonder. Do I have any more? Is that it? Oh, no. And then he felt distress. Do you guys remember when he was in the garden? Man, how much stress was he in? How much pressure was he in? And so emotions are, are not necessarily your enemy, but our wounds have created our emotions to be our worst enemy. I think that our worst enemy is not necessarily always Satan. I think the worst enemy is the person you look at in the mirror every day. And so let's address some of that stuff. Look at what John 14, 26 says. John 14, 26. It says, but the helper. Everybody say helper. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He. Everybody say he. he. See, until you get this revelation that he wants to help you. You will never help yourself. You won't. He will help you. He will teach you some things, a few things. Huh? My Bible says a few. He will teach you what? All things. So what, what are you lacking right now emotionally that you feel no one understands me. That's a lie. The help.
helper understands you. Because he can't teach you all things unless he understands all things. That's why he says, lean not in your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And so don't, don't, don't get caught up with the lie. No one understands. Yes, there is one. And his name is Helper. <laughs> and he knows you better than you know you. And he will teach you all things and he will bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. You know what? The Holy Spirit not only wants to bring remembrance <coughs> of the word of God to you, but the Holy Spirit wants to bring back some of those things and experiences and events that you've had in your life that you and I have put away in our subconscious that we don't want to address and deal with. But it's not to expose them, it's to heal you. Okay? So this is, this is what he wants to do. So let's just look at this. That means that he can help us. Okay, let's make a pie. One extra one. So he can help you in your spiritual life, emotions, emotional, life, physical, uh, what else? Uh, social and intellectual. Listen, the Holy Spirit, HS, okay? Hashtag. Holy Spirit wants to help us spiritually, emotionally, socially, intellect. How many know that the Holy Spirit is pretty smart? Yeah, he wouldn't be a counselor if he wasn't. Right? He's pretty intelligent. And physically. He, he deals with all these areas in our life. The Holy Spirit. And so many times we want to suppress the emotions that we go through, but he wants to deal with those emotions. He doesn't want us to just keep living and keep going. And how many know that it's easier just to keep going until something happens? And God wants to begin to help us right now. Like this is the moment. Shh. This is the moment that God wants to help tonight. But haven't you noticed that emotions are like, they're like children, huh? They always want attention. Have you noticed that? That's what emotions are like. They're like children. They just always want to bug and pull on you and here, look at me. Look what I'm going through and all that. But however, God loves emotions. As a matter of fact, if you go with me in Galatians chapter 5, you know what God said? He said, you know what? I know that you guys would be a little cray cray, so I better give you some new emotions. He gave us nine emotions that we should have. Everybody say nine. So check this out. He gave us nine emotions through the Holy Spirit. Nine. Let's read the scriptures here. You ready? Galatians 5, 22 through 23, it says this. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit or the fruit or the emotion of the Holy Spirit in you. Does the Holy Spirit live in you? Check this out. Uh, he says this. He says, you have been given the emotion of love. Is that an emotion? Love. Come on, I have love. How about joy? Look at that, peace, long-suffering. If you've been suffering for a very long time, now you know why. You've been gifted to suffer long, praise God. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Like, that's a gift from God. Like, if you're someone, I'm always suffering. Like, dang, you really are connected with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> like, you're spiritual, man. You are awesome. Yeah, so stop. You know, when you're trying to be drama, the Holy Spirit's like, yeah, that's, that's a gift. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Look at this kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to leave you an orphan anymore. I'm going to give you the nine emotions I want you to have in your life. And they are his character. It is what God wants for all of us. Now, can we walk in these 24-7? Heck to the no, it's hard. You know why? Because we live, in a, we live in such a broken world, and I know that every single one of us have experienced some kind of pain in our history. 
Come on, all of you have a story here, and your story has a history of some experiences, of some events, of some pains, of some hurts that you have not been able to get past from. But God's saying, hey, I want us to go ahead and deal with this. So how do you start producing the fruit, the character, and the nine emotions of the Holy Spirit? Well, let's start with this. Let's start with being realistic. Let's start with being honest with ourselves. It's kind of um, like an iceberg. Have you guys ever seen an iceberg? Let me show you a picture of an iceberg. An iceberg is pretty awesome. Because when you see the iceberg, let's say you go to Alaska, which there's so many icebergs there, looking forward to go there one day in Jesus' name. That's like my dream vacation. And uh, to go salmon fishing and all kinds of stuff. But when you see an iceberg, 10% fact, 10% of an iceberg that you and I see, you're like, whoa, that's not, that's, that's just 10% of it. 90% is at the very bottom. And how many know that many of us, when we talk about the, the iceberg, it's all surface. You, you, only see, you only see the little peak, but you don't see the depth. And what happens with us believers is that we live a life sometimes where we live our whole Christian life with surface Christianity. Or, or we, we live with only 10% of what we're willing to show people. But people we'll never see the 90% that's really deep on the inside of us because, because we're too busy hiding it. So we live on 10% instead of living the 100 that God wants to do with us. And we're very serving. How you doing? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. No, you lie. <laughs> Don't glory to Jesus mean all that. We all go through stuff. You know, I hate it when people tell me, what's wrong, Pastor? You look sad. Damn, I'm, I'm human, chill, good Lord. I'm not, a, I'm not a robot. Are you okay, Pastor? Are you okay? I'm human, dude, I'm like you. You know, if, you, if, you've, if you've never seen me bust out like a super pastor in SP hashtag, leave me alone. I'm, not, I'm, I'm human. We, I, we go through the same th stuff, yes? I'm no different. I'm in need of a Savior as much as you're in need of a Savior. I need the Holy Spirit, right? Because I've experienced some pains. I've experienced some hurts. But at the end of the day, guess what? We all have the same helper. Okay, so he wants to help us. And it's okay because what happens is we, we don't deal with the 90%, which is deep beneath the surface of our lives. And there are layers and layers of things that have taken place. There are layers of childhood pains that you've gone through. Come on, things that you haven't been able to talk about. Things, experiences that have happened. There's layers of unconscious motivations and, and, and things that have literally instilled fear in your life. There's experiences that you have tried to forget because you don't want to address it. But God is saying, hey, listen, I not, I not only give you my Holy Spirit so that you you walk in power and, and so that you can be witnesses in all the earth. God's saying, hey, listen, I, I'm not just a take. He says, I'm a give. I, I, I want you to give and preach the gospel freely. You received it freely, give it freely. But at the same time, God's saying, but I also want you whole and I want you healed. That's why I sent my son Jesus. It wasn't just for you to surface, have this surface language of like, yes, you know, I'm born again saved. No, I'm born again saved and set free and set apart for his holy purposes. And then we got to deal with some stuff. If not, here's what happens. You start seeing a lot of, a lot of uh, inconsistency. You start finding that when something goes wrong, if you're always running away from problems, that's an issue. There is, there's a pattern in your life that has not been broken. When things get tough, when someone offends you, if you're constantly dealing with offense, there's, a, there's an internal issue on the inside that has not been addressed. And so you will never experience the fullness of God's victory through his son Jesus because we live a life of 10%. And, and, and God said, no, come on. I know that you've experienced stuff. I know that you've been wounded. I know that you've been hurt. I know that you've been betrayed. I know that you've felt lonely. I know these things, but I want to help you. And we have to address it and we need to deal with it. You know why? I mean, I, let me tell you why. Let me read you a verse. In John 16, 13, look, look, look what he says. 
He says, however, when he, the spirit of what? The spirit of what? What do we deal with constantly? Lies. So he says, so, so the helper, the spirit of what? Truth. Look at this. Has come. And he will guide you into some truth, half a truth, kind of a truth. He, he will guide you into all truth. That's why the Holy Spirit is also known as the spirit of truth. See, Satan is known as the father of lies. Jesus is known as the spirit of truth. And the battle is the constant lies that we have created because of the experiences that we've dealt with in life. And then we go on because we never address them. And then what happens is those lies begin to shape us. Those lies begin to condition us. Those lies begin to form us. And then before you know it, you start having these. Let me just kind of draw it out for you. Can we just draw tonight? Let's draw. I like to draw. Okay. So check this out. So surface. Let's use a different color. surface okay so so there's the iceberg right and so you got this these layers everybody say layers and so here's how it happens so when you were a child you started forming a belief system watch the Watch it, guys. I'm going to have feedback here. You started having a belief system based on the environment that you grew up in. It's the reality. It happens. So there's a belief system that comes into your life, my life. And then once we have our beliefs, then our beliefs begin to create these thoughts. Everybody say thoughts. And the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so, so. I start thinking what I believe. You start thinking what you believe. And so then your thoughts begin to create, guess what? Emotions. Are you with me? And then you know what emotions are? Emotions are feelings. They're feelings, right? All of a sudden, I don't feel. And we start having all these different emotions. And you know what emotions do? Emotions then create a behavior. Are you, are you here? So, so it starts with beliefs. And then from beliefs, you start thinking the way you believe. It's kind of like when you come to Christ, the moment you come to Christ and you've experienced Jesus and he's changed your life, all of a sudden, you know what? I can tell you right now, there is no way in hell that anyone can tell me that there is no Jesus. Why? Because I've experienced his supernatural work. I've experienced his supernatural love. I've experienced his forgiveness. So no one can tell me that there is no God. And so my beliefs have become my thoughts. My thoughts have now become my feelings, my emotions. And then my emotions have become my behavior. Why are you so happy? Why are you so passionate? Why do you have to like run back and forth on stage? Because I'm expressing my belief. And then my beliefs are thinking that, man, God is awesome. And then my thoughts are saying that, man, I'm so emotional. I want to express my love to him. And then I behave that way. Does that make sense? And so how do you start addressing some of the things in your life? You have to start asking yourself, okay, what do I believe right now? What do I honestly believe right now about myself? Because as a man thinks in his what? Heart. How you're thinking right now about yourself in your heart is who you are. Right now, insecurity, that's a heart issue. Fear, that's a heart issue. Anger, that's a heart issue. Lack of forgiveness, that's a heart issue. Do you see what happens here? But then God says, but I gave you the right emotions that I want you to have. There are nine emotions. I gave you the spirit of love. I gave you a spirit of joy. But isn't it interesting how the experiences and the wounds that we go through begin to challenge the very character of God inside of us? 
The struggle is real, and that's okay. That doesn't make you a bad person. But at some point, come on, let's deal with it. Let's address it. Let's not just keep surface 10%. Let's not be this awesome iceberg that God created, but we only show 10% of what he's done in us. God has so much more. Look at this. John 8.32 says this, and you shall know the what? And the truth shall what? It's time to get free. It's time. Come on, just talk to two or three people. Come on, just say, come on, it's time for us to get free. And so listen. So, so okay, pastor, okay, I got you. So, so what do I do? What do I do? What does that mean? Okay, well, let me draw a little guy. My drawings suck. It's okay. These little hands, little weird hands. Okay, so so check this out. So so what do I do? So so you have to start telling yourself because we know that the Satan is the father of lies and God is the father of truth. Who's your daddy, right? Number one. Okay. So let's just start with this. Here's what you need to do, guys. Here's what you have to do. We, we, need, we, need to, we need to go home before Friday because Friday you're going to come to healing room. And you're going to get rocked. Okay, people are going to speak over your life. People are going to have a word in season. God is going to begin to start some surgery in you. But you have to start asking yourself, okay, you know what? What, what, are, what are some lies right now that I have made my belief? For example, I can say, you know what? Uh, I'm stupid. I, I, I'm lonely. What else? Give me, give me some, what are some things that you think? Come on, I know it's not you. We're talking about the church down the street, not you guys. <laughs> not you guys. So, I'm sorry? No one loves me, okay? But what else? I'm sorry? I'm not what, good enough? Not good enough. What else? Worthless. What else? Hate. Huh? Ugly. What else? Sick. Huh? Useless, which is worthless. Confused. Okay, so, so, so here, here's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this, is that if, if you want to start moving forward towards progression, you have to start confronting. And so what you do is you start writing the truth. What do I mean by the truth? Okay, uh, the truth of what you truly believe. And some people's truth right now is the lie. I'm ugly. I have hate. I'm lonely. I'm, I'm, okay, so, so then what do I do? Okay, so we're not trying to be negative here. We're just trying to be realistic here first. Because the Holy Spirit, and you got to invite the Holy Spirit in this. I'm almost done. So don't, don't get checked out, okay? We, we invite the Holy Spirit say, okay, Holy Spirit, what are some things that I have probably uh, uh, made my belief system? Like, you know what, I'll, I'll never mount to anything. I'll never be successful. You know what, I'll, 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 always, I'll always be alone. I'll, I'll, I'll never be satisfied. And you start thinking about these things. Like, I'm always afraid and, and nobody likes me. And so those are all, those are all lies. Because the truth is this, is God, does God say that you're stupid? Does God say that you're lonely? No, you know why? Because here's what you do. Then you take a lie like, I'm lonely. Now, that's the reality. I feel lonely. But then what we have to do is we have to get back to God's truth. And the Bible says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So then you go ahead and you grab that verse of God's promise, of God's truth, and you write that over that word, lonely. And you cancel that lie and you take on a new nature of God and you take on the truth of God and you say, no, he never leaves me, he never forsakes me. And the more you deal with it, the more you talk about it, the more you start believing it. So it's renewing your mind all over again and dealing with some of the core beliefs that you created. Are you here? Let's take another one. Okay, you know what? 
I'm ugly. I'm worthless. Well, here's what my God says. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Nobody cares about me. Well, guess what? God says, you're the apple of my eye. Huh? You say, I, I can never do nothing right. God says this, and I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. Everybody's against me. God says, if God be for you, then who could be against you? I'm confused. The word is a lamp to my feet and it's a light to your path. No one leads me. But the Lord is my shepherd. And he leads me to green pastures. And he guides me to all truth. And he gives me strength. Do you get it now? It's replace the lies with God's truth. Now, you're no longer 10%. Now you're going a little bit deeper. You're no longer just playing church. Now you're being the church. Because if not, you'll just keep going. And you'll wake up one day. And you'll be sorrowful. And maybe you're already sorrowful, but you know what? Guess what? God says, when you say the lie of sorrowful, God says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, last verse and let's go home. Look at this, Romans 8, 26. I should do a whole series on this, huh, soon? We should talk about this. So check this out. You put some of this stuff up here? Great. I don't know what this is, but all right. I like to rock my head. Okay, um, look. It says, likewise. Romans 8, 26, 28. Quickly, let's, let's, let's get out of here. Service isn't even until 9, but I'm going to get you guys out of here early tonight. Likewise, the Spirit. Everybody say the Spirit. Also helps us in our what? Okay, weaknesses. He says, for we do not know what we should pray. That's why when you do things like this, we got to pray. And the only way to know the truth is you got to go back to your word, open the Bible, and then you have to start saying, okay, Holy Spirit, help me to replace that light with the truth. And he says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be what? Uttered. In other words, what you don't get? Holy Spirit says, I got you. And now, he, who? Who's, who's he? Holy Spirit. He says, and he who searches the hearts. He searches what? The heart. He says, he knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who what? To those who are also what? Listen. This is so kind of weird. You know what? Uh, in life, sometimes you go through stuff and you feel broken. And you go from one experience to the next and someone betrayed you and then someone talked about you right someone left you someone died it's okay don't worry about it and we can keep going and going and so you start feeling life has been a whole bunch of brokenness and you're just like my god one experience after the next experience after the next experience think about it guys we go from one pain to the next pain it's like going from one bad relationship to the next bad relationship to the next bad and so you carry this thing and then you're like no I'm good I'm good praise God and you just go ahead and just take a little wave of the hand and then you do nothing else and it's like God's like no my Holy Spirit is intelligent we don't just deal with surface he says I am the Holy Spirit I go deep to those places I search the hearts when you give me permission to do so 
And so we feel broken and we got all these kind of huevos and, and stuff like that. And, and then you know what happens then? And, then? and then listen, and then sometimes in life, you just start going through all kinds of dry seasons. Man, everything's just dry. Just dry, just dry. And you're just like, nothing's working. Nothing's happening. I'm spiritually dry. I'm, I'm physically dry. I'm tired. And you got all this crap going on on the inside of you. And you just feel like, man, there's nothing good going on, right? And then sometimes you also have these moments in life where you have this feeling where life is slipping away. It feels like oil. You can't hold on to nothing. It just seems like, man, it's too good to be true. Every time I try to do something, it just slips right out of my hands. I can't get anything out of life. Every time something good happens, something gets in the way, and all of a sudden, you know what? I'm right back to the same place. It's a slippy slope in my life. Nothing works, man. Every time I try to stand, I slip. You're broken. You're dry. And everything, life is slipping away everything. But then there's a God in heaven. When you decide to turn your eyes back to Jesus, when you decide to seek the Father, when you decide to say, okay, I'm ready to start dealing with this and I'm done running from it. I'm done church hopping. I'm done going from this group of relationship to that group of relationship. I'm done pointing the finger at everyone and I'm ready to start addressing my stuff because I am responsible for me and no one else. I stand alone when I stand before the Father. I will not stand with those who have hurt me. I will not stand with my family. I will not stand with my children. I will stand alone. And God the Father will say, I gave you everything that you needed and there's nothing that you lack that has not come from above, from the Father of lights. And then when you decide to turn back to the Father, he has placed this amazing Holy Spirit who then comes in like a flood. And all of a sudden, man, we start mixing some things up. The Holy Spirit starts jacking you up for good. All of a sudden, you know what? You're saying, man, can this get any worse? But sometimes it has to get worse before it can get better. And then you know what happens? Then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit starts inspiring you to read your Bible. You start adding a little bit of water. And all of a sudden now, life starts getting just a little bit easier. Not forever, but let me tell you something. It does get a little bit easier. And the Holy Spirit now has permission to begun. The Bible says this, and the Spirit of God will stir the gift within you. Please go back to Romans quickly. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray. I don't know what to do. But the Spirit, ever say but. But the Spirit himself, he makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, 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 he who searches the hearts knows, I know what your problem is. I know your issue. He knows. Aren't you glad that someone knows? He knows. He knows what the mind of the Spirit is because, because, you know why he knows? Because he knows how to pray for you. Because he makes intercession for the saints according, according to what? The truth the word of God, the truth. And let me tell you something. And after, man, the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and you thought that all this crap was just jacking you up. He says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who what? Love God. To those who are what? Called according to his purpose. So he will take every single bit of your brokenness and then all of a sudden he says, okay, let's make some cake. He's like, let's go ahead and I'll take every single thing that broke you, that busted you, and we're going to make something beautiful out of it. And then we're going to eat it together. So, yes, you can have your cake and eat it too. Yes, you can. You can. And you will. You're not too far that God can't reach you. You're not too broken that no one understands. We have a God in heaven who's for us and not against us. 
Fine, you may be in a dark place. Guess what? We've all been there. You may be in some deep trouble. Well, guess what? You're not the only one. You may have gone through some serious, painful stuff like abuse physically, verbally, whatever kind of abuse. Well, guess what? You're not alone because everyone here has experienced some form of abuse. Everyone has experienced some form of loneliness. Everyone has experienced some form of something that caused pain. What am I saying? I'm not going to dumb down anyone's pain. Pain is pain. But God said, and I will take all things Every single thing that you and I have been through. And he says, and I'm going to work it together. And we're going to go ahead and stir it up. We're going to take your broken, your broken ways. We're going to take those dry seasons. We're going to take that slippery slope. And, man, we're going to mix it up with the Holy Ghost. And we're going to make us some pancito and some cake and whatever you like. And it's going to be an awesome thing because you know what? He says, because I will do these things to those who love God and to those who are called according to my purpose. And so guess what? Every single one of you have been called by God. Can we give Jesus a big hand clap of praise? you got to give him something greater than that because he is the answer. Let's stand to our feet and honor him. Stand to your feet and give God an awesome praise. Ready? Go! If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.